Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the fourth episode of Falcons in Focus. I am joined by Michael Walker, a.k.a. the pride of Fresno State, as he's wearing his uh, Fresno State football shirt. Also, 2020 draft pick. Also, starting inside linebacker. Also, also, I would say the person who has the most consistent hat game on this team. <laughs> I do love your, your hats, your number three hats. Were those... Chance the Rapper hats, or like, were those you were like, you know what, that's my number, that's what I'm gonna use? It's definitely the number. You know, okay, the great. Number I'm gonna use it. I like Chance the Rapper too, but yeah. I mean, it's really for the number. Okay, that sounds good. Now, I was, you were recently mic'd up, and I was watching your mic'd up, and something that struck me as being very interesting, and I've seen y'all do it, do this a few times. It's your inside linebacker, like, huddle break, where y'all slide and then you do a jump shot. How did that come to be? What's the story behind that? All right. So the original break, well, I don't know. I can't cuss on here. But the original break, <laughs> uh, it's called a BMF, you know, okay. bad mo, you know. Mm -hmm. So, and but it also stood for Bo, uh, Bo, Mike, and Foe. So that's really where it came from, you know. So, um, you know, we do our little break and we'd always break off of that. And so one day I'm just kind of messing around. I just did like a slide with it. And they're like, oh, I kind of like that. So then it just kind of evolved. And the next thing I know, we would like slide and then. Foyer thinks he's the next, you know, Rajon Rondo basketball <laughs> player. So, you know, he'd always like, you know, do little jump shots and stuff. So we're like, oh, I'm like, well, wait, what if we just put it all together? And yeah. then, so we'd always break off of that. We would slide and then, you know, act like we're doing a little jump shot. Nice. And that's just kind of where it came from. Okay. Who's the best basketball player on the team right now, currently? I mean, I would normally I would say myself, but right. looking at Drake, you know, it's probably that is Drake. True. <laughs> you know, maybe if this is 2021, yeah. you know, maybe it's you. Yeah, I got now a, it's Drake. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely Drake. <laughs> I've definitely seen his like 360 dunk. It's it's all over the internet. <laughs> so I'm glad that you actually brought up Foyer because I think y'all's relationship was something that I loved witnessing while he was here. Now he's with Jacksonville, went and got that bank. So good for him. <laughs> but for you, what was it like coming into this linebacker room in 2020 with Foyer and Debo and and kind of who they were to you in that first year that you were here. Yeah, I mean, just my whole time being in the league, those guys are like my big brothers. You know, they took me in immediately. Um, I mean, uh, Dan Quinn called me and was like, yeah, like, you know, we're looking for you to take his job. You know, we're looking for you to be the next starting linebacker here, you know. And Foyer, like, when I first got here because of COVID restrictions, like, he helped me you know, train like he would take me with him to go train and stuff like that like he didn't care that I was here to try to beat him out like he wanted me to be, be the best I could be because he had that confidence in himself that it doesn't matter how good I am he's gonna start mm. and that's something that I took you know like no matter who it is I think I'm gonna start because I have that confidence but I like those guys built that in me you know just just of how the, I saw them operate every day and I try to do the same that they did for me yeah uh it's funny because Fresno State Bulldog Foyer I think also a bulldog, yeah, Yale. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> As someone who's also a bulldog, Georgia, go dogs, D A W G S. What, I, I'm sure you're going to say Fresno State is the superior dogs. Definitely. Yeah. De definitely. Like 100%. <laughs> I mean, Yale's not, I mean, I didn't even know Yale was a bulldog. But at the end of the day, you know, Georgia, they, they got a good good case. But yeah, Fresno yeah. State. So this is um, something that I get. So I know the answer to this before I ask you. But something that I get asked all the time by the fan base in general is why you spell your name the way that you do. That is a question that I get asked all the time. They're like, that's an interesting way to spell the name Michael. So please tell people so that they can stop asking me. Please tell people why your name is spelled M-Y-K-A-L. So the reason why my name is spelled like that is because I have a twin brother mm -hmm. and his name is spelled M-A-L-Y-K. So you just take the words and move them around to spell M-Y-K-A-L or M-A-L-Y-K. And his name's Malik. So it's Malik and Michael. And that's why my name is spelled like that. Thank you, everyone. You've heard it here. I do not have to repeat this. I'll just play this clip back for everybody. Now, I, I love that you have a twin brother. And please tell me, I don't know, what's it? what was it like growing up with, with a twin? Because I have sisters, but they're a few years apart from me. So for you, having someone, a brother, nonetheless, kind of just go th going through life together, what was that experience like? I mean, it's amazing. I think being a twin is like the best thing you could do in the world because like you're never by yourself. You know, we always, you know, we shared a room for the longest time. Um, I mean, you learn the same things at the same time. You play certain, I mean, even though you guys have different likes and stuff like that, you guys are together 24 seven. So 
I mean, just my, me and my twin brother couldn't be closer. I mean, we call each other on the phone like six times a day. So, <laughs> like, we talk all the time. Um, you know, we still we still hang out, talk, and, you know, later in life, we still want to live next to each other. So, I think just having a twin for me was so good because he just pushed me in different ways. You know, mm-hmm. like, he's super smart in school and everything like that. And, obviously, I'm here in the league. So, like, you know, we've just been battling and pushing each other our whole life. Yeah. Now, is twin telepathy a real thing? I think when you're a baby, maybe, uh, you know, because, uh. you know, they, they can, you know, babies communicate and stuff. Right. I, I got my son now and he does some weird stuff. But like, <laughs> <laughs> so I think when you're a baby, they, you know, they can communicate. But I mean, when you get older, you know. you're two different people yeah. at this point. OK, I, I understand that. Did you guys get into trouble a lot? I mean, you're two little boys like growing up with each other. I'm sure you got into some some messes. Yeah, all the time. It's, uh, you know, just, I mean, it, it, when you're a twin and then somebody gets in trouble, you both get in trouble. So it doesn't matter who did it. You're both getting in trouble. So. What's your What's your favorite story from from growing up? And, and what's something funny that, that y'all used to do? Maybe you still do. I mean, heck, y'all are in your 20s. You still still could be crazy. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, they, they always separated us, you know, growing up at school. We mm. never got to, we were never the twins in the same classroom. So, oh, like, okay. we never got to be in the same class. Um, so, we never had, like, you know, we didn't get to change, you know. We don't look alike, but we did a little bit when we were younger. So, yeah. we, you know, we never got to do, like, the little switcheroo or anything like that because we never were in the same class. So, <laughs> just never worked out. I love it. Now, it's really interesting because I think when I was sitting down to prep for this podcast, Something that just kept coming up, all the questions that I wanted to ask you were the thought of like family was woven together through all of the questions that I wanted to ask. And one of my favorite stories that I think you told, it was like, I think right after you had gotten drafted to the Falcons and you were talking about your dad and you were playing Pop Warner and he told you then essentially like, you're very special and I'm not just saying that because I'm your dad yeah. and and then also you know he played at Fresno State he went to the league but he said to you when you're very very young I mean I'm literally reading it like you're gonna make it further than I did I mean to think back about one the influence that your dad had on you but also like what does this say about his like intuition? Because now, I mean, look at you now, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think just as you know, you know, as he had multiple sons and stuff like that, you can kind of see it. You know, sometimes some kids just have it. You know, and yeah. I think at a young age, I was just when it came to football, like it was just my thing. Like I was, that was just my thing. I had. I mean, obviously, I wasn't out there, Deion Sanders, in you know eighth grade, but <laughs> we know, all like, could wish. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, um, I mean, it's just something that he would always say to me, you know, and it just gave me that confidence to always go out there and try to be the best on the field at all times. Yeah, I mean. I, I really love that. And now you are a father, which, you know, congratulations. Is, is he coming up on one year? Yeah, so he'll be 10 months on the 8th. So. Okay. Oh, wow. So how has that experience been? I mean, because you, you become a father in the kind of the beginning, middle of the year last year. What was what was that day kind of like for you? Oh, it was, it was crazy. So I, was, <laughs> I actually went. Um, it was a Wednesday. And so, you know, our first day of the practice for the week. Um, I was up all night. He came out in the morning, and then uh, it was like weird because it was, they, you know, they still had kind of like COVID restrictions and stuff. Right. So yeah. like, I was there for him to be born, and then once he was there, I basically only one person could stay in the hospital, and if you stayed in there, you had to stay for like three days. Oh. So I had to actually go home, and her mom was staying with her. So I literally went to practice right after my son was born. I was about and- to say, <laughs> I was like, I don't remember because we always get like you know injury reports, practice reports, all that kind of stuff, and it's all Ar- Arthur Smith usually tells us like, oh hey, like Parker Hesse, he just had yeah. his his daughter, and you know that's why he's not here. But for you, it was like I never remembered yeah. like you not being there. Yeah, I, I literally went to practice, like, right away. Like, I just, he was born. I came to practice, everything, meetings. It all just kind of lined up, you know, we practiced in the afternoon. So, right. it just lined up. I just came to practice. And I'm going to tell you, I was so out of it. <laughs> uh, they were just like, Matt, Matt in the bush, like, hey, Mike, come come over here. Just, you're okay. Just sit over here. <laughs> it's like, it's fine. You, yeah. You've had a you've had a long a long day. <laughs> For you, what's it been like to, to kind of enter into this part of your life and, and fatherhood and, and getting to kind of, I don't know, like, I, I, I know you talked about your father before and being like a role model for you what's that like kind of now having a son on your own 
Uh, it's incredible. You know, I just come home like every day is a new day. You know, when you have when they're just experiencing life. You know, he's so curious in life and he doesn't know anything. So like the little things he does, it's just it makes you laugh and stuff like that. And you know, when I get home from practice and I'm tired, as soon as I walk through the door, like he wants to see me. So that I mean, that's nothing better than that. Yeah. Now is he a uh, daddy's boy or no. mom, mama's no, boy? He is a mama's boy, true and true. <laughs> as <laughs> as a daddy's girl, I mean, I kind of understand the whole yeah. separation. It, it makes sense, you know, as much as. As much as I, I feel sorry for you, <laughs> kind of makes sense. Yeah. Now, he actually, one of my, and I was talking to Grady about this on our very first episode, but we, one of my favorite parts of training camp this year is that families got to come yeah. for practice. I mean, to be able to have him out there just kind of crawling around, like, what did that mean to you? It's just something I've always wanted, you know, when you just, when you're young and you think like, oh, I'm going to go to the league and everyone says, you know, elementary school, I'm going to the league, you know, you think I'm going to go to the league and my son's going to be out there with me, you know, he's going to be wearing my jersey. It's just something I always wanted and like for it to actually happen sometimes, like, I mean, I, sometimes I still wake up in the morning, like I can't believe I'm in the NFL. Like some, I mean, you know, yeah. sometimes you just get hit with that. So just him being out there, it meant so much to me. Yeah. What was your uh, welcome to the NFL moment? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Easy. I had uh, I was you know I was just playing defense and coverage and um, Julio Jones ran a route and like in this coverage like I had to take him on a route and I was like there's no way like they, they expect me to take Julio so I just like let him go. <laughs> did <laughs> you really? I literally just let him go. I'm like there's no way I expect me to guard him. So. <laughs> did anyone say anything? Oh my god! Like, I got I got ripped for so long like because <laughs> <laughs> you know I knew what I had to do. They're like Mike, right. you knew what you had to do, yeah. and I was like coach, like it doesn't even make sense for me to guard Julio. So like <laughs> <laughs> so just go ahead and send him. <laughs> Send him on his way. It's fine. Just keep, just have him keep running. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. I always like asking people that question. Now we're going to wrap up here, but a little game that we play at the end of every Falcons in focus episode is we do a rapid fire round. It's five questions, rapid fire. Um, and you can talk about them if you want to, or we can just go boom, boom, boom. It's all up to you. Okay. So first question. Your favorite play as a Falcon? I feel like I know this answer. Yeah. It, is it the pick six? It's definitely, yeah. <laughs> definitely pick six. Um, definitely pick six. Cam Newton was my favorite football player yeah. ever. So that was, you know, definitely pick six. And that was the week that, that was the same week that yeah. your son was born. Yep. That was crazy yeah. too. Like the fa also now knowing like that you were going off of no sleep like three days before is hilarious. All right. Uh, last movie you saw. Uh, I wanted, well, we watched Devotion as a team. You oh, know, yeah, We all right. watched Devotion. It was a good movie. Was that cool? It was real cool, you know? And yeah. I, I, the movie right before that was Top Gun, so, like, right? kind of like, yes. yeah, like, they're good movies. Did you watch Top Gun on the way, on the flight out to L.A.? I did. I watched it I again. also did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've watched it, like, five times. Yeah, I, I think I've seen Top Gun three times now. Three times, yeah. yeah. I've seen it, like, once in theaters, like, twice in IMAX, like, now on the plane. Yeah, <laughs> like, had, to, had to see it in IMAX, for sure. So good. Um... Uh, favorite restaurant? Oof, this is this is a hard one for me. Mm -hmm. I I actually uh, love Nacho Daddy right here, and so my favorite place was I found it in Vegas. My okay. best friend was in Vegas for a long time, so like I always go there, and he introduced me to Aaron. There's one right over here in Duluth, and I go there all the time. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> I also like I think you're the first person that's had like a really specific answer like lined up when oh, we yeah. when we talked to Grady, he was like ah, and then he listed like seven Atlanta restaurants, and we're like, all right, everybody, take notes. <laughs> um, the Falcon that you spend the most time with. I mean, it was Foyer, so right. Now, uh, <laughs> mm, I mean, it would it would just still be my linebackers, you know. I, you know, my people. I mean, yeah. It was Debo, it was yeah. Foyer, so now it's like just my linebackers in general. Yeah. What's your favorite memory with Foyer in playing with him? He just, I mean, it had nothing to do with football. He just, mm -hmm. he's such a funny dude. Like, I mean, his <laughs> favorite rapper is Nelly. So, like, it just, I mean, like, <laughs> he's just, he's just a guy that just, you know, he brightens the room. Like, yeah. it just makes you, it makes you laugh. You know, on long days, you just look at him, I laugh at him all the time. So, like, just. <laughs> oh, I love it. Now, last one, and this is the one that catches a lot of people. Biggest pet peeve. Oof. Wow. Yeah, got, it's got hard. Um, also, the answers that we've gotten over the course of so far this series has been very different. Everybody has very different pet peeves, which I think is fun. I think my, my biggest pet peeve is, like, if I ask a question mm -hmm. and then someone goes, like, or, I, like, I'll say, like, like, for instance, this just happened to me. I was like, <laughs> oh, like, I forgot. I took my dog to the vet. I forgot the leash. And then the, the response was, how did you forget that? Like, it's like I just did. Like I walked out the door, I didn't have it in my hand. Like right, I, yeah. I, it's like my biggest pet peeve. Just like simple, like simple answers like that. Yeah. Just, 
bothers me. It's like, come on now. This is an obvious answer. I just forgot it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's all it is. Yeah, that's the biggest pivot. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's all that we have time for. But thank you so much for joining me and letting everybody get to know you a little bit more. I really appreciate it. No problem. This was fun. Thank awesome. you for having me.